my name is Nick Tukulik, and I've always been really interested in how psychology affects how we grow up. That's why today I'm going to pose the question to you guys, does birth order affect how we develop a personality? Some research would say yes, and others would say no. But today I'm hoping to give you information and allow you to reach your own conclusions. Here are a list of personality traits grouped from A to D. As I go through them, try to identify yourself or your siblings in one of these groups. Are you A, a perfectionist, natural leader, well organized? Are you B, more diplomatic, good at avoiding conflicts, and independent? You may be C and can consider yourself more of an attention seeker. Or, uh, or a people person and affectionate. And last but not least, you may, be, you may identify yourself with D, and you may be more, uh, may have considered yourself more mature at a young age, or uh, have high expectations for yourself, and you can be a high achiever. If you're the oldest in your family, then you may, be, you may have identified yourself with group A. Oldest children tend to be natural leaders. And that's why it's really no surprise that 64% of our presidents have been firstborn children. Some examples of famous firstborns, or well-known firstborns, are Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of Britain during World War II, and led the nation to fight back against Nazi Germany. Hillary and Bill Clinton were both also Firstborns and are good examples of successful firstborns. And we all know Angelica from Rugrats. She's a, she's a good example of a fictional stereotype of a firstborn child. If you're the middle child of your family, you may have picked, you may have associated yourself with uh, Group B. Middle children tend to be more diplomatic and good at avoiding conflicts. And that's why some good examples of famous male children are Martin Luther King Jr. and John F. Kennedy. Both these men were peaceful and were instrumental in helping people avoid conflicts. And if you watch the Cleveland show, then <laughs> you, you may know that Cleveland Brown Jr. is also a pretty uh, good uh, example of a male-born child. And if you identified yourself with group C, then you may be, you may be the baby of your family. Youngest children can be more attention seeking, but that also allows them to be more of a natural entertainer for people. And that's why some great examples of famous youngest children are Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy. And from Bob's Burgers, Louise is a really funny uh, youngest child who tends to stir the pot and cause mischief. And last but not least, we have Group D. And if you identified yourself with Group D, you may be an only child. Only children are almost hyperextended versions of oldest children and tend to have high expectations for themselves. And that usually leads to them being high achievers. Um, only children may sometimes also have challenges working with others. Some good examples. <laughs> Tiger Woods and Maria Sharapova are pretty excellent examples of successful only children because the, they're both high achievers who reach the very top of their sport. And from South Park, um, Eric Cartman is a extreme but hilarious uh, stereotype of a only child. Now, if you, if you don't fit into the mold, don't sweat it. If you don't fall into one of these groups I just talked about, it's really not a big deal. Um, there are lots of uh, variables that go into how you grew up. Uh, that may have affected you and changed who, who you are and how you act. 
some of these variables may be maybe the age and size between siblings, the gender of those siblings, um, stepbrothers, stepsisters, adoptions, and twins. I hope that I was able to give you information and allow you to think about how birth order may affect how you or your family members have grown. Thanks. Have a good one. Thank you.